G'day guys, Big Biff's Life and Mayhem. So we are back with another podcast. And so I think today we're going to talk about, people always ask me, what's the craziest prison I've been to or what's the craziest unit or pod I've ever been to in prison? So today we're going to talk about that. So let's not waste any time and let's get stuck into it. So Big Biff's Life and Mayhem, let's go. So yeah, I get asked all the time, what the most scariest jail I've been to or the most hecticest jail I've been to and then what's the most hecticest unit I've ever been to. So I've been to every maximum security prison um, in Victoria and I have spent lengthy amounts of time at these prisons. And like, you know, I've been to Barwon, Port Phillip and then the only other maximum security prison you've got is... um, MRC, which is Metropolitan Remand Centre, and then you've got the MAP, which is Melbourne Assessment Prison. And yeah, don't get me wrong, Bowen's a fucking hectic jail, and I've spent lengthy amounts of time there, and, you know, I've been in every single unit there as well, and, um, yeah, like, there is some crazy units there, like, Diosma is, like, you know, the craziest unit at Bowen, and, like, look, stuff goes on at Bowen all the time, like, you know, um, yeah, like, uh, you know, just stuff goes on all the time, you know, um, and, you know, there's, there's gangs there that, that run that jail, you know, and, um, you mess around with them gangs and you're going to feel the, the wrath of their pain or, but you, you better believe it, you know, people do get killed there and people have been murdered there, you know, um, as it's clear to see on television and whatnot. And yeah, so Barwon is a crazy jail, you know. There's a lot of people at Barwon that are doing life, you know, that are never going home. Um, and so basically when people are in that mentality, like some people like turn their life around and they're like, they start changing their life from the moment they go to jail. But some people, you know, get given a 30-year sentence and say, fuck you, um, it ain't going down like this. And um they turn it right on and you know what I mean? You get a bunch of people that have got that mentality and let me tell you now, it makes a scary environment for every other person around there. And then, so what happens is when people are in that environment, you, you have to, it's like, you know, fight to survive. You, you, you literally do, you know? And then, so when people are walking around the yard with shanks that big on them, well, Mate, I'm going to be walking around the fucking yard with a shank that big. And that's just how people think, you know. Um, so, yeah, Barwon's a crazy jail, you know. And, like, as you see in the media, like, pretty crazy things have happened at Barwon. And, like, pretty crazy things will continue to happen at Barwon. Um, you know, I mean, as far as, like, Barwon, I mean, there has been known to be corruption at Barwon, you know. But as far as, like, I mean, it's a pretty, like, serious run jail you know where um the majority of the officers there are doing their job and like um the security there are hectic so like they are crazy they're the squad that they send around to every jail in victoria when when the jail's fucking up and they send the bow and security you know um and um yeah so yeah don't get me wrong bowen is an absolute fucking mental jail and like You know, I've seen some crazy weapons there. Like, you know, it's just fucking crazy. But, like, look, um, you know, there's also some people there that, like, you know, are hectic people and take no nonsense. And, like, it's a kind of jail where you you won't last in that jail um, if you're not going to stand up for yourself, if you're not going to fucking, you know, because, like, you know, a lot of people do a whole jail sentence without even getting into a fight. But, like, when you go to Barwon, it's a whole different world up there, you know. Um, like I said, it's kind of run by gangs. Um, there's a gang that's been running that joint for, um, like, look, a long time. And, um, you know, um, the gang there is called the POWs, which is the Prisoners of War. And, um, like, look, I'm not going to name any names or anything like that, but, like, yeah, that's a fucking crazy, crazy gang, you know? And then you've also got, 
um, another gang there, which is called GFAM, which is um, like stands for gangsters from around Melbourne, and um, so like it's, it, it it is predominantly um, Pacific Islanders, and um, yeah, they're big boys and they don't fuck around. And I had you know a fair few friends um, in that gang, and um, yeah, you know, um, one of them's doing really well now. He's got out and turned his life around and he's got a pretty good podcast um on youtube so um yeah i'm not i'm not i'm not going to give him a shout out because i don't know if he wants me to or not so but yeah um like they're the gangs that are there and they're fucking mental like don't get like people get stabbed there all the time like people get stabbed at maximum security all the time it's as simple as that um but yeah that is a crazy jail but that is not the craziest jail I've ever been to. So a lot of people say that, like, Barwon is the most hectic jail and, like, a lot of people that maybe aren't in the know think that as well because of what happened there with Carl Williams and the fella that um, killed him. So the craziest jail I've ever been to would be Port Phillip Prison. And I mean that in every respect of the word. Like, it is fucking crazy. And I'm, t- like, I can't even tell you. Like, I've seen corruptions go to the highest level in that jail. And, and you know, um, when it's like that, no one's safe. Let me believe you. You know what I mean? I'm talking like doors are getting cracked off in the middle of the night and people are getting ran in on by other crooks in the middle of the night because screws are open in the door and they're getting fucking bashed, you know, like, um, also Port Phillip prison had no security cameras. I'm not even kidding. Like the highest security ranking jail in Victoria, along with Barwon maximum security. It doesn't get any higher than that. You've got, a, you've got units like Acacia, Malaluka and stuff at Barwon, um, which are like predominantly jails inside a jail. But as far as, like, general population maximum security, like, this is as high as it gets. So, yeah, no no cameras at Port Phillip until, like, almost 2018. So it was, like, December 2017. Like, maximum security jail with no cameras is, like, the craziest concept to wrap your head around. And, like, you guys are probably going to be thinking, are you serious? And, like, I'm telling you, like, they had one camera in each yard one camera and no cameras in the unit nothing so like people were getting killed in the units um i'm not going to say all the time but it happened very frequently and um yeah it was just crazy like so and you know i've spoke on this before like i got involved in gangs in jail i've still got the tattoo there and um so you know um when you when you get to Port Phillip, like it's just people hear about coming to Port Phillip and they they literally like start stressing out because like you know Port Phillip's the kind of place where corruption is like rife and like people just know that like say for instance if you had a drama with someone there like you are absolutely at risk <laughs> like it's as simple as that and what I say by drama, I mean like if you owe someone money or you've bashed someone in another jail and there's five people waiting for you at this one, you can guarantee you're going to meet them five people at some stage in your sentence, I guarantee you. Like, you know, Port Phillip Prison is the kind of jail that just takes anyone. It's a privately run jail, which means that it's all about money. And let me believe you, I spent nearly seven years in that jail and um, it is all about money. And like, um, so this is the kind of jail that takes like, say, so say with the bike clubs, you know what I mean? Like at one stage they had, um, four of the top five, um, bike clubs in the country and, um, yeah, so they had the, all those different bike clubs there, but at, at the same time, like, I mean, it was a powder keg just with that situation and there was times where two bike clubs conveniently met at the gym and stabbed the shit out of each other, you know? Um, so it's crazy. And, um, so yeah, I got involved in the gangs and then, so what happens is like 
you can kind of fly under the radar and be involved in a gang. It happens all the time. People do it all the time. I've done it for a long time, you know, but like there's going to come a time where like if you're getting involved in the gangs where you have to like put work in. And when I say that, like you can't be involved in something like that and just stand in the corner and watch. And I'm not going to say what kind of work you have to put in, but you guys can leave it to your imagination. Now I've told you what kind of stuff happens here. So, you know, you're going to have to put the work in. And then, so what happens is you start putting the work in and you're going to start getting noticed by the screws. And then what happens is they've got units for this kind of thing, right? So what happens if you get involved in gangs and you get involved in violence and stuff like that? Obviously, you're going to go to the slot. And by the slot, I mean segregation, 23-hour lockdown, um, the pokey, all different things. It's called lockdown, right? And then, so generally, after you go to the lockdown, they send you to a management unit. Um, and then, so the slot at Barwon is called Charlotte. Um, and then um, there's the spine where everyone has to spend at least 14 days, which is no TVs, one blanket, no pillow. Um, like, it's hard. Do you know what I mean? And, like, some people have to spend 28 days on um, that kind of lockdown. And, like... Port Phillip's the only prison where they do the slot like it does. Like, people who do the slot, like, mate, like, Charlotte's not, not for the faint-hearted. Like, people have committed suicide in there without even completing their 14 days. So it's a pretty full-on joint. So, and then after that, you go to a management unit. So generally, the management unit is called um, Borrowdale. And then, so you will go to Borrowdale. And then you'll spend whatever time you have to spend in that management unit until they can figure out your security classification, where you can go, um, and if you're going to bloody stab anyone again or whatever, you know. So, and then after you go there, you, you, you generally go back out into gem pop, you know what I mean? You go back out into the yard. But like, if you're a naughty person, you go to a unit that's called Scarb South. Um, and some people go to the next door unit, which is called Scarb North. Their real names are Scarborough South and Scarborough North. All the units at Port Phillip are named after boats from the first fleet that arrived in Australia. So, you know, Scarb South is like one of the most feared jail units you can go to, you know, like shit happens there. And like, I spent a long time there, like, um, you know, I'd done the Charlotte thing, done the Borrowdale thing, and then I went to Scarb South. And, like, I'm telling you, like, it was crazy. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, I was involved with the bike club, and there was a bike club in there that was kind of at war with the, with, the, um, with the Pacific Islanders. And, um, you know, there was a lot of... Um, a lot of the um, Muslim community was in um in scarb south and like some of the most feared men in victoria were in that unit you know and so like it was just crazy and like people were dropping all the time and like it was the kind of kind of unit where like good solid men were like turning to water for the situation that was erupting in that unit which eventually turned into a riot and so everyone had a ride in that unit and so like it was fucking crazy you know and um and then the 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 islanders really went on with it like props to the islanders for going right on with it that day like they really really said you know when the, when the screws kind of tried to manhandle them and that they were like nah this ain't happening today and then you know so props to them for doing that because like the screws at port philip are corrupt as and um, so, yeah, the, eventually a riot happened over the situation that was here. And I was seeing good men, like, disappear, you know. And um, and by that, I mean, like, just take off. They couldn't handle the, the stress of this unit. And um, I spent nearly three years in there. But when I spent my time in there, so I'd only just been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So there was times in there I couldn't even use my legs. Like, I had a walking stick at most stage. And um, so that was you know, handy thing to have around in a unit like that. So, you know, and no cameras. So, like, all this shit's going on and there's no cameras, you know what I mean? So, like, corrupt shit, that's when corrupt shit happens, you know. Like I said, like, when doors are getting cracked off in the middle of the night and blokes are getting ran in on 
by 10 blokes that are getting let in there by the screws. Like, it was fucking scary. Um, so that's Scarborough South, you know. And so, like, Port Phillip itself is like a crazy jail. But, like, you know, Scarb South would have to take the cake. But these days, I'm telling you, like, the shit happens in every single unit. It's freaking crazy. Like, Port Phillip has got no idea, like, as far as security goes. You go to all the jails, like, that are owned, that run by the government, you know. Um, it's like, security is not an issue, you know what I mean? You go to Port Phillip, it's a privately run jail. Don't get me wrong, like, there is some screws there that do the right thing, and, um, like, there absolutely is, but there's a lot, lot of screws there that do the wrong thing, and, like, they just have no clue. Like, seriously, like, some of them screws need to spend, like, six months in, like, Barwon or something like that just to see how, like, the government run their jail, and, like, so, yeah, it's a fucking scary jail to be in, and, like, you know, this is the kind of jail where, like, I've had parcels thrown from run... Every unit is segregated. So I've had parcels thrown, parcels thrown from one unit to the other. And, like, in between them two units is what's called no, man no man's land, which is fenced off with, like, 30-foot fences that have got barbed wire on the fence. And, um, you know what I mean? So, like... You know, I've been part of an operation, me and my friend, to jump over into no man's land and receive that parcel. And, um, like, this is all getting watched by the tower where the screws are. Um, and then, so there's a new building in Port Phillip, two stories. And anyway, so there's a bit of a tower there. But anyway, so, like, this is right next to that. And we were able to do that and, like, get away. And, like, I'm running away with this parcel thinking that there's 600 screws chasing me with guns and everything because we jumped into no man's land. Nah, man, we got away with it and, like, it was too easy. And then, like, that, that little incident there kind of started a wildfire because once people seen that I could do it and, um, you know what I mean, I'm not a small guy and my other mate. And, um, yeah, so we got away with it. That kind of started a wildfire of no man's land incidents. Um, but, yeah, look. Um, since I've been to Port Phillip last, so, you know, it's changed a lot. So the fences there were like, I mean, they're jail fences, but they're wire and you can see through them, like it's solid wire, but you can see through them, you can like pass letters through the, um, through the fence and stuff like that. But since I've been there, the fences have been like covered so you can't pass things through. So no one can see anyone in another yard. But that doesn't mean you don't know when when someone's there. Like say, for instance, when I was in Scarb South, I was what's called an induction billet, right? So what happens is when you're induction billet, at the start of the day, you get a list of people that are coming into that unit that day. So, like, I basically know at the same time the screws know whoever's coming into that unit. So, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you know. So, like, if someone's coming in that you have a problem with or someone has a problem with, you can guarantee that they know when you're coming before you know that you're coming there. Believe me. Um, so, yeah, poor Philip is absolutely crazy. So, like, it's a jail that's also run off, like, this ticketing system. So every other jail has got like identification cards. You've got identification cards at Port Phillip, but you can't tap them and scan them on anything like you can at other jails. And that lets you into uh, like, you know, you got to go to medical, you tap your thing, go through this gate. They know exactly where you are at all times. You can't go anywhere without your card. You won't get let through any gate, you know? And like, so Port Phillip doesn't have that. They've got like these colored cards, like that come in. It's like, post-it notes basically of different colors that are like this big and each color is designated to a certain yard and like there is nothing that's on a screws desk believe me there is nothing on a screws desk that i can't get my hands on at any time and it's not hard to do that do you know what i mean all you've got to do is just cause a distraction old boys are down here having a punch on all the screws run bang bada bing bada boom you know the rest is history um I've ended up with screw stereos that have gone missing. We've all been locked down. Like that screw was chucked over to the next door neighbor's unit. This was in Scarb South. This, 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 the biggest, loudest stereo, the screws had it, you know? And I was like, this ain't happening. I, I'm taking that. So I did take it. And I'm telling you, 13 seconds after I had that freaking thing, 
that was in the hands of someone in the next unit. So, yeah, we get locked down and they search. They can't find. They're scratching their heads, mate. I was already paid for that thing 26 seconds after I had it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Port Phillip's crazy. So they have these... I know I keep saying Port Phillip's crazy, but it's crazy. So this ticket system, and, and you get... All you got to do is rip off, like, the top 10. They won't even notice that you've got 10 of them tickets. And if you can do that once a fortnight, you can get anywhere in that jail because it says... Big Biff has come from Scarb South and is going to medical. Not in them words, but basically. And then all you've got to do is forge them. The screws have a scribble signature. It's easy to forge that. You can, you know what I mean? It's a piece of piss. And like, um, you know, the, the, they were well onto it when I, when I left. But like, it still doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. Do you know what I mean? And like, so I'm not aware that them, that they've changed that system. And like, um, I did go back for a small hiatus after my big sentence and they still had the stupid ticket system. Um, so yeah, you know, like, it, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a jail where like, you know, people think like, oh, jails like America, jails like America, like our jail is nothing like American jails in a lot of senses, like very similar in the rules and the way things run, but like just totally different. But like if any jail in Victoria or Australia is like an American jail, it's Port Phillip because, like, it's a privately run jail, like most of them are over there. And, um, yeah, it, it, it's crazy. So that is absolutely, you know, the most craziest jail I've been to. I could talk all day on some of the craziest things that have gone on there. Like, people die there. It's, it's a fact, you know. And, like, it doesn't make the media or whatnot, but it happens, you know. And, um, you know, like I said, corruption's on the highest level. And so, like, which leaves it open for anything. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's been times where guns have been found at Port Phillip. And, like, you can Google this. This is a fact. Guns have been found at Port Phillip twice. And how does this happen? Well, it's corruption. You know what I mean? And um, I can tell you now that someone's not coming in with a friggin' um uh, a derringer like up their bum you know what i mean it's not happening that way it's getting brought in other ways corruption wise you know um you know and obviously like there's there's other things you know like and some things i won't talk on because like people were still doing their thing in jail and i, I don't want to unearth that you know but like i'll talk about things that have been changed and stuff like that and you know we can touch on other things also but like as far as this story goes, that's that's probably where we're going to leave it. But yeah, I mean, Google Google Port Phillip Prison in Victoria. It will blow you out, the amount of corruption stuff you find on there. And I mean, there's screws that have left there that have spoken out about the corruption there. Like, um, you know, and, and so when there's corruption like that, like no one's safe. And when no one's safe, everyone knows what you have to do. And that means you have to arm up. And by arm up, I mean grab a shank, grab a weapon. Everyone does it there. And it's crazy. They don't have metal detectors where you walk through. So, like, you can go anywhere in that jail with a shank that big and they ain't going to find it, you know? And, um, yeah, so, like, there's, there's ways people do that. And, like, I will definitely not touch on that. But, yeah, that is the craziest jail, Port Phillip. And the craziest unit I've been to is Scarb South. Like, people have died in that unit and um like that is the unit where people go when you've been a naughty boy and like you know if you're a real one in that unit like let me tell you i have seen men walk into scarb south with their bags had one look at the unit and just walk straight back out the door and to the gate and say pull the rip cord and say get me out of here so it ain't for the faint-hearted so that's called Scarborough South, so you can do your Googles on that. Like, I know there's been news articles on that also, you know. So, um, yeah, I've been uh, Big Biff's Life of Mayhem. So I'm going to continue these podcasts, guys, and continue pumping them out, and I'll continue touching on matters, what people want to talk about. Um, and believe me, I've got so much I can talk about outside of prison, inside of prison. Like, it's literally a life of mayhem I've lived. People hear about my story and sometimes think that it's like 
it's unbelievable for them because they haven't lived that life, you know, but like I 100%, you know, talk, I'm happy about talking about the things I've done in my life. Um, I've turned my life around, so that's not a problem. But also you just need to know that there's some things that I can't touch on. People want to know about things that I can't talk about. You know what I mean? Like um, I may not be living that life, but I still have a code of honour and I still have um, a respect for my brothers that are doing time um, and, um, yeah, I, I won't break that honor, you know? So you guys just need to know that, um, you know, although I have changed my life, um, I still do have a lot of friends that are in that life themselves, you know? And, um, so yeah, absolutely won't do anything about, um, you know, there's some things we just can't talk about. So yeah, I've been big Biff's life and mayhem. You guys have been awesome. Also guys, if you guys like the paranormal, Check this stuff out. So my page is called Big Biff's Haunted Stuff on TikTok. Um, I've got 165,000 followers. We do paranormal investigations and other stuff on there. So check that out, guys. It's absolutely awesome. Um, so, but yeah, I'm going to keep these podcasts coming. Um, I've been Big Biff's Haunted, Big Biff's Life of Mayhem. You guys have been awesome. Let's go. Also, guys, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, put a comment in there, and uh, share it around would be much appreciated. Thank you, guys. Big Biff's Life and Mayhem. Let's go. Cool.